Our final segment will kick off with a special guest and commence in about a half hour outside. I'd like, we have the honor of having with us today Vincent Papali. He was born, Vince. <laughs> Vince hails from Chester, Pennsylvania, not too far from some of our facilities in South Jersey. He's a former professional American football player and played three seasons with the Philadelphia Eagles of the NFL. Yes, you can go ahead. And following two seasons with the Philadelphia Bell of the World Football League. Vincent was, as you all probably know, the inspiration for the phenomenal 2006 movie Invincible. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Vincent Papali. All right, how you doing, everybody? All right, thanks, Tim. Thanks, everyone. Care One. Oh, man, where's my Eagles fans? Any Eagles fans here? Thank you very much. Any, any Cowboys fans? Yeah, thank God. Get them out of here, right? So, uh, I, I don't know. If, if, if you're not inspired by what you just saw in the last 45 minutes, there is nothing that's more inspirational and I just had the greatest thing happen to me. I got a hug from Mary. So isn't that awesome? Don't, I mean, don't you wish, don't you think they should make a movie about Mary? That would be, oh, there is a movie, something about Mary. There it is. It's out there. Speaking of movies, anybody had a movie made about them lately? No? Anybody? Has anybody seen Rudy? Yeah, Rudy. How many have seen Rocky? All right. Anybody seen Invincible? Oh, okay. All right, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it, uh, you know, in a few minutes. I'm not going to take up too much of your time because a lot of fun things are going to be going on. But let me tell you what Invincible is about. You just saw it. You just saw it. That's what Invincible is about. Invincible is about. I don't have to give a definition. You just experienced. You felt it. You're it. That's what it's all about. You know, when you talk about Care One and, and all this thing that's going, I have, I, I have this saying I always say, my wife and I always say, it's givers get. And that's what you've been doing. You givers get. And, 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 you know, it could be that last hour that you give that could be the last hour. It could be the dollar for the cure. That could be the one. And that's what you're about. And it's really touched home to me because of a few reasons, and you'll see one in a moment. But I'm a cancer survivor, you know. And, and, the, and, and, the, and 16 years, man, I kicked its butt. I got that colon cancer. So... I always tell anybody in the room, uh, you know, because people, try, they, 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 they count on you so much. Anybody here that's afraid to take the test, especially for colon cancer, because it's not so cool, take the god darn test, all right? Just, just take it. And it's not that bad. You might even like it, you know, so it's, <laughs> hey, so man, you know. Hey you, hey, you never know what they'll find. Last time I had my colonoscopy, they found my father's shoe, so uh, it, it was up there. Well, it's really good to be here, and thank you so much, <laughs> Daniel and Lizzie, and I'm really proud to be a part of this organization, and you'll see why in a second. But even so, I I'm so proud to be an NFL alum, and I know we've got some alums coming around. You're going to get an opportunity to meet them. Uh, what an honor uh, to be a part of that unique fraternity. And it all started with a dream. You know, that's what it was. Any dreamers out here? You know, and, and yeah, yeah, as was said, you know, wishes come true. Make a wish, wishes come true, and dreams come true. So I thought what I'll do is uh, there was a little video that was done by the Reels channel. And then I'm going to fly through this thing really quick because of all the fun that's going to happen. But uh, I think it's a good idea. You get a chance. I don't want to talk so much about myself as opposed to I want to talk about you and some of the things that you're doing and that you'll continue to do as you move forward with Care One and all the invincible things that you do. So I hope you like the video, and I hope it comes up. It's, there we go, all right. I love technology. Philadelphia, it's the city of brotherly love with a tough personality, a place that believes if you get knocked down, you better get up and knock someone else down. Philadelphia is also a place that loves its football team, the Eagles. This is the story about one very unusual football fan, a man who overcame huge odds to become a part of that team. 
a blue-collar kid who made the Eagles roster at the age of 30, becoming the oldest rookie at the time. In 1976, after losing his job and his marriage, 30-year-old Vince Papali, a die-hard season ticket holder, tried out for his team. Could a man his age actually begin an NFL pro football career? It was unheard of and never happened before. No one believed he could do it. No one, that is, except Vince. For a three-year period, that's Vince right here overcame in Boston at the old Schaefer Stadium, pack. right there, that shot. And in doing that, he became Philadelphia's hometown hero. A man <laughs> was the definition of invincible. His amazing entry into the game and the effect that story had on his hometown became the stuff of legend. So much that, years later, his career became the subject of a major motion picture starring Mark Wahlberg. This is the true story of Vince Papali, a Philadelphia icon who never gave up on his dreams and inspired a city to chase theirs. A man who refused to be conquered, defeated, or subdued. A man who truly is invincible. Well, I hope you like that very much. That was done by the Reels Channel, show during the Super Bowl last year. And this is where, um, this is where you come in. You've touched my life, Care One. I live in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. That, came, uh, that slide came a little bit undone there. But uh, the Care One facility in East Ham, New Jersey, that young man you see there with my jersey on, that's my father-in-law. That's my father-in-law, Jerry Cantwell. And uh, he's the oldest. He, well, the oldest. Yeah, he was the oldest. He had nine kids. My wife, Janice, right there at the bottom. And what was great about going there, it got a little rough because he was living with us for a while. And then when he, um, it, when he sort of got a little bit uh, too much for us to handle, where did we go? We went to Care One. And uh, it was phenomenal. And, I, and as I was saying, you know, one of the great things when I walked in there, it smelled good, you know. And, 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 re and it really did. And everybody was really welcome. And the, one of the things that was so important was the fact that we could bring our dog Bandit there. Because Bandit wasn't just his friend. He was a friend of all the residents there. So thank you, Care One for impacting our lives and doing the great things that you've done. Thank you. All right, here we go. So I know that a lot of us out here are dreamer, dreamers, and I know Daniel and Lizzie, you know, it's the possibility of having a dream come true that makes life very interesting. And I dreamt that I'd be a Philadelphia Eagle one day, and my parents uh, had their dreams too, as they were, a son, they were sons and daughters of immigrants. Ladies, that's my mother. That's my mother, 1937, playing hardball. Imagine that. They were so, those women, yeah, not cool. Those women were so tough back then. They wore cups. I mean, that, you know, that was my mom, all right? Uh, and she never got beyond the eighth grade. She was one of nine. My father, uh, the son of a pig farmer. Now, you know, I'm so proud to say I'm the son of a pig farmer, you know, so that he's the son of a pig farmer. My grandfather came over from Italy, uh, went through Ellis Island in 1914, and there's my dad on his field of dream, and that's their wedding, uh, their wedding day in 1940. My dad never getting beyond the eighth grade, but they had the dream, you know, and their dream was to have their kids grow up and go to college, and we, happen to, we had to happen to do that. And that kid that you see at the very, very top on the left next to the guy in the white coat is me. There I was, playing Little League football. We didn't have Little League football in our neighborhood in suburban Philadelphia. So who started the league? The guy with a really snazzy hat in the middle. And there's my dad, Kingy. And that was the guy that started that. So it all started with the dream, and it all started with my parents helping me out with the dream, and especially my dad being my coach. He, walked, he worked at Westinghouse for, I don't know, forever. But, you know, when you have a dream, when you have a dream, People do everything they can to try to take it away from you, don't they? When you're trying to think outside the box and do something different, people just want to do everything for whatever reason. It just pisses them off that you want to do something a little bit different, do something special, or maybe taking a risk. And these are some of the things that I had to deal with when I was trying out in 76. Now, again, going back, I didn't play college football. I was 30 years old. And, uh, you know, so that was the deal. So here's one of them. You know, I was bullied unmercifully out on the field. Uh, you know, from an intellectual boying as standpoint to a point where I, I was slammed on the turf and I separated my shoulder. So all the ball players here and, and guys that are uh, some Hall of Famers we have here in this room and some Super Bowl winners know that when you come in as a rookie, you can't get injured. You know, so I just played that whole time without telling anybody with a separated shoulder, and thank God I wound up making the team. But I did get bullied. And, you know, people are saying, oh, you know what, you can't do it. 
Well, what are some of the reasons you can't do it? Well, you're to this and you're to that. Well, you figure out what the two and the this, the two this and the two that is, right? You just fill in the blanks on that one. And then the other one was, you know, you don't have the skills, man. You're a track guy. I was a decathlete, actually, and I qualified for the Olympic trials in a decathlon. And the reason I started playing football on these rough touch legs is because I was told that I didn't have the, the proper credentials to get into the trials. So I got ticked off, started playing football, and I got the last laugh, made the NFL, right? You know, I mean, that's not too bad. And get this movie. I mean, that's even better. But, uh, yeah, it's, you know, hey. You know, you know the deal, baby. One door slams and the other one opens up, you know. So it's, it's as simple as that. So, you, you, you know, you don't, you don't have the skills, Vince. All right, what's this next thing? Oh, well, you don't have the proper resume. You know, you didn't play college football. Ho, ho, ho. And then the other one is, well, it's too risky. It, well, you know, they're saying, they were saying risky. And, well, why would you want to give up your teaching job at six years at your alma mater? I was working on my master's degree. Why would you want to give that up and try out? Why not? I mean, why not? You know, I wasn't afraid of getting hurt. I mean, I had that T-shirt. Who's nuts? I was crazy. So that's what it was all about. So, you know, you did it. And then there's the entitled, the draft picks. You know, oh, well, who, they thought I was a snitch. And all I wanted to do was I just wanted to make my team. I was a season ticket holder for 10 years. I was at the upper, upper, upper section in, in the nosebleeds, and that was part of that deal. But here's what it comes down to. It comes down to three things. People just don't like sometimes people when they're successful, and they resent it. And you wonder why they resent it. Well, they resent it because they're insecure, and that insecurity is fueled by jealousy. I mean, that's what it's all about. And so that's, you know, these are the obstacles that I had to deal with, and I know that everybody here has had those obstacles, and especially all those that we were talking, that were talking before we came up. Imagine the things that they went through, you know, well, it can't be done. Well, guess what? That word isn't even a part of the vocabulary in the Papawi household. So they were the dream killers, and, um, you know, uh, and the dream came true, obviously. And why does it come true? Think about who the most important person in your life is. Who is that person? Have you thanked them? Have you reached out to them? Have you written a note? Have you given them a call? Have you texted them if they text? You know, the, the person that was my most important, and the guy who was the biggest impact in my life was my coach, my high school coach. Well, you know, a lot of people say that was, that was the case, but I'll tell you why it was it, 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 the high school coach or teacher would be a big, impactful person in their life. I'll tell you why he was so big in my life. See that beautiful woman you saw there, my mother? Well, she was mentally ill. So when I was 13 years old, she was a prescription drug addict and an alcoholic. And I come home from work, I mean, come home from school every day, and it was horrible. I mean, it was just what was going on in the house you couldn't even possibly imagine. And it was just turmoil. And if it weren't for that guy right there, I never would have had that opportunity to play high school football, get a track scholarship to go to St. Joe's. And that lady at the bottom, that's my wife, Janet. I just threw that picture, and I loved looking at her in a leotard. So, uh, you know, <laughs> can't help myself, you know. You know, TMZ, here you go. <laughs> so there, there it is, you know. It's, and it's that, that dream, it's all about that person. And when I'm trying out for the team, you know, it's all about that person helping me. Who's the guy that comes in my life again when people are telling me it can't be done since you're too old, it's never been done before, you're 30 year old, blah, 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 no college football. He gives me this quote, and he said, happy are those who dream dreams and are willing to pay the price to make their dreams come true. And there it was. Man, I was willing to pay the price. And I took a, good, a couple good knocks right over there at Schaefer Stadium. How many people remember the field that was over there? Right, right? Okay, remember, there it is. You got Foxy there, you know, you got Mike over there, and, and that, that's the stadium. And that was actually one of the stadiums where it was a proving ground for me when I made the team back in 76 and had some fond, fond memories, especially those battles with Tim Fox, Foxy. I couldn't believe it. He just knocked my, he, he knocked me silly one time. But I, I told him, you know, he gave me this welcome to the NFL stuff. You know, you know just what I wanted to hear. I don't hear this crap. You know, so I just told him, keep your head in the swivel, Timmy, because I'm coming after you in the second half. I got him. <laughs> so it was pretty good. But, uh, you know, good stuff in it and, and great memories, uh, especially here. And then, of course, they make the movie. And, uh, again, how many people saw the movie? Just a couple, right? <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, if you haven't seen it, I'm going to show you the trailer. I'm going to give you the spoiler. I made the team, okay? <laughs> and the other spoiler is, uh, in, in the end, the girl that's featured in the movie that's played by Elizabeth Banks, I married her. She's my wife of 24 years. And, and yes, I cry every time I see the movie. Does anybody cry when they see the movie? Well, I do, and I've seen it about 127 times. Last night, last, night at, last night at dinner, people were texting me, hey, man, the movie's on, you know? 
and it's and it's because it's it's on all the time, especially during football season. And uh, you know, and, and and people say, well, why do you cry when you see the movie? Well, when it came out, it ranked number one in the box office. It did like 30 or 40 million dollars in the first couple of weeks, and it ranked number one. It was there for two weeks, and and, and now it's up to about 800 million dollars with Disney. And you know, you know, I cry. I get nothing out of that. I get zero. <laughs> Zero. Yeah. You imagine that? See, it's like, I need a new attorney. Anybody here? Yeah, where, where, where's Bart Oates? I need an attorney, Bart. All right, so here's the trailer of the movie, and then I got about the, like the, a five minute drill right afterwards, and I'm going to give you a couple of things that I think you ought to need to know, and maybe help me out a little bit about what it takes to be invincible. Oh, and a couple of good Mark Wahlberg stories. Any Mark Wahlberg fans here from the. Um, ah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just texted Mark right now.